Friends, welcome to our Ash Wednesday worship service. We're going to begin with the choir. So that is, John Paul is beckoning the choir, not everyone. You can remain where you're seated unless you would like to sing in the choir, in which case we would love for you to sing in the choir. But we're going to get started with song, and then we'll begin with worship on the hour. Welcome, friends. Just a word of announcement. We're gonna, you're going to need a piece of paper and something to write with a little bit later in the worship service. So if you have not, uh, don't have a piece of paper, just raise your hand or make your way just to the door. The ushers will have them for you. We're going to use those a little bit later in the worship service tonight. So friends, good evening. My name is Andrew Connard. I'm the preacher here, and I want to welcome you to our Ash Wednesday worship service. On Ash Wednesday, we remember our brokenness. We tend to separate ourselves from God. If we're left to ourselves, we just make mistakes sometimes, and we need to be forgiven. And we recognize that tonight, the ashes, that we'll receive are a sign of repentance. They're a sign of turning away from the things that we've done wrong. They're a sign of turning away from the things that we've done wrong. The cross was God's answer to our sin. On Ash Wednesday, we remember that we are each going to die. Now, that's not very pleasant to think about, and yet it's true for every one of us. Every one of us is moving towards a a day when our mortal bodies will end. And before we leave tonight, we're going to remember and look forward to and anticipate that Easter is God's answer to our mortality. We will have heard God's word this evening We'll have reflected on our sin. We're going to write prayers of confession and leave them to be burned as a sign of offering them to God. And through all of these things, we will remember God's mercy and grace. So as we begin our worship service, 
I invite you to stand and join in singing together, O Master, let me walk with thee. You may be seated. And as you're seated, I invite you to join with me in this prayer. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, our God, as your people come before you in adoration, open our lips that our mouths might declare your praise. You are the God of our salvation, and we sing of your deliverance. Please help us tell of your mercy to the ends of the earth. You've called us to share what we have received at your hand, but instead of doing your works of mercy in private, we take delight in being praised by others. How much we enjoy having others see our righteous acts. But you, O oh God, have called for a true sacrifice of the heart. It seems so much easier to look holy than it is to be holy in your sight. Create clean hearts in us, O oh God and renew our spirits within us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, enable us to be genuinely sorry for our sins. Please help us repent of our ways and seek only your face. Make our time of preparation for Easter a renewal of our faith. Take our offerings and transform them into your kingdom. In this time, we recall your son's passion we remember his suffering and death for our sakes. And this day receive others who are suffering and dying into your care. Give relief to those who hurt. Give calm to those whose minds are troubled. Give peace to all those who are dying and have mercy on us all. O oh God, hear our prayers and answer them as you know best. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand physically or spiritually as we listen to the reading of today's scripture text. Let's connect with the voices of the Bible as we listen to God's word. From Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. From there, Jesus and his followers went through Galilee, but he didn't want anyone to know it. This was because he was teaching his disciples, the human one will be delivered into human hands, they will kill him. Three days after he is killed, he will rise up. But they didn't understand this kind of talk, and they were afraid to ask him. 
They entered Capernaum. When they had come into a house, he asked them, what were you arguing about during the journey? They didn't respond since on the way they'd been debating with each other about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be least of all and the servant of all. Jesus reached for a little child, placed him among the twelve, and embraced him. Then he said, Whoever welcomes me and Uh, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. You may be seated. Jesus knew that his death was coming. Can you imagine what that would be like? I mean, yes, I understand that with my head, and I know that each one of us is dying. That's the point of this service tonight, and yet Jesus seemed to know really specifically, and he was telling his closest friends, and they just didn't get it. Why would you want to? This guy, we'd followed around there uh, for years, and he'd shown us really amazing things. In fact, he had healed people that were in need of healing. People that had had died were brought back to life again when this Jesus was there. And yet here he was telling them that he was going to die. He brought a child to sit among them and said, whoever wants to be first must be least of all and the servant of all. Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. Now that's a change, isn't it? (laughs) Hey friends, I'm going to die, and by the way, let's be like these kids over here. God doesn't always act in ways that we would anticipate or plan for, at least that's not been my experience. And certainly here, this juxtaposition of predicting his death and bringing a child to sit among them, perhaps a sign of life in the midst of the disciples, this change reminds us that God doesn't always act the way that we plan or the way that we anticipate. And so on this Ash Wednesday, we take a moment to reflect on the disjointed places of our lives. For you see, sometimes we say we want to live in a particular way. I want to love my neighbors, and I want to love my enemies even, at least I say that, and yet I don't always live like that. And so today is one of those days where we take a moment to reflect and consider How do I want to live? How am I actually living? What does God want for my life? How do my actions live into that or separate me from that? When we recognize our differences from what God has in mind for us, we it's called confession. It's naming those things that we know that we've done or haven't done that we need to be forgiven for. And in this story, we see that Jesus welcomes the child and that Jesus welcomes us. So that when we bring ourselves on a night like tonight, when we bring ourselves on any day or any night, God is ready to welcome us and to forgive us and to say that in the end, God wins. Love will always walk with us. And our journey to Easter is a chance to be transformed again, to open ourselves to the surprising ways that the Spirit is at work, to recognize the ways that we've done wrong, and to seek to live as a follower of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we come before you acknowledging our imperfections and the ways that we fall short. And we seek your forgiveness and grace. We're thankful for your teachings and your sacrificial love. Guide us to live according to your example, filled with your spirit and committed to a path of service and humility. Amen. 
I invite you now to stand as you're able and join in singing together, What Wondrous Love Is This? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection with great devotion. It became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, leaders helped prepare converts to the faith for baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and who had separated themselves from the community of faith discovered reconciliation through repentance and forgiveness and were restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation, every one of us, remembers the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of Jesus to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy scriptures. As we prepare to receive the ashes for the imposition of the ashes, as it's called, I want to share with you about this part of the service. The ashes are what remains of the palm branches that were used in previous Palm Sunday. The tradition is to burn last year's ashes. I did it early this morning, and then to use them Um, to remind us um, that we will die and we need to repent. In ancient times, of course, you remember in the Old Testament, one way that you were to express for all the world 
To see that you needed God's grace when you had sinned was to place ashes on your own head. And when people saw the ashes, they knew that you had publicly repented. So wear it through the rest of the evening, this cross that you'll receive as a reminder of saying, I need God's grace. I recognize my own mortality. In just a moment, I'm going to invite you forward down the center aisle. When you come forward, I'll make the sign of the cross on your head, on your forehead, and offer a word of grace. I'll say either remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return, or repent and believe the gospel. If you'd like to light a candle after you receive ashes, you're welcome to do so, and then make your way back to your seats to reflect and pray. I invite you to join with me in a prayer of thanksgiving over these ashes. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. We ask that these ashes will be a sign to us of our mortality and repentance. Please help us remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
we begin 40 days until Easter, and we begin with the sign of the cross. And we need to remember our need for repentance, so we're going to take some time to confess our sins. It may not be something you do very much, or maybe you do it regularly. Uh, We're going to talk about that, and I'm going to give you some instructions, and then there'll be some quiet, invite you to um, take some time to do some confession. When I think about confession, I think about those things that I should have done that I didn't do. (laughs) And then, of course, there's those things that I did do that I really should not have done. There are sins that we do by acting, and there's sins that we do by not acting. There's individual ones, and there's systemic ones that are part of our community. And we can sin in our thoughts, by our words, and by our actions. And I find it helpful sometimes to write my prayers down, and that's what your paper is for, um, pen and paper. We're going to pause to make space for all of us to do that right now. Now, you might just complete the sentence, Lord, please forgive me for, and then write down all the things that you need forgiveness for. And you're the only one who's going to see it. You're not going to turn it in. You're not going to give it to me or your neighbor. Um, After the service is over, we're going to take them outside, and we have a fire pit um, with the remainder of those palms. We're going to light them, and we're going to invite you to place that piece of paper into the fire to let it be burned up and consumed as a visible reminder you have confessed your sins and that God has heard your confessions and forgives you. So I'd like to invite you to join me in writing down your prayers of confession as a way to confess them before God. Just take a few minutes to write. Sometimes I feel like I'm just getting started with all the things that I might confess, and yet I trust that God hears them and hears your confessions and offers you forgiveness. Will you please stand and listen to these words? The scriptures say this, if we claim that we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far God removes our sins from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
God's mercy is real for all of us. After the service, we'll invite you to make your way out in silence and to place your confessions in the fire, allow them to be consumed, and feel God's grace wash over you. Please remain standing and join in singing together, Lord, I want to be a Christian. The journey towards Easter might seem long sometimes, but there is an end, and in it we find resurrection. Go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.